Hello, hello. We are here again with another episode of Voting Broadcast. Kelly, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you, Lisa. How are you doing today? <laughs> good. Give the people a little update about what's going on on today's voting broadcast. For sure. Uh, welcome, everybody, to another episode of Voting Broadcast here at beautiful Marine Max Clearwater in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, today, we have a really good episode for you. We're going to start off with some headlines, including a 40 foot floating violin. I'm for guessing, real. Uh, did they build it for a boat or we'll <laughs> find out? Also, an upcoming Marine Leadership Summit. You need to learn a little bit more about that. And uh, a few of us uh, had the opportunity to visit the Azimut and the Aquila Rendezvous, one down in Captiva Island, Florida, the other one in Montauk, New York. Did I say that right? Montauk? I don't know how they would say it. But <laughs> beautiful, good. beautiful location over there in the Hamptons. So you, <laughs> that was a great opportunity to check out all the latest Azimut models and having uh, customers have a great time up there. And uh, our special guest today is Mr. Jim Raycroft. You've probably seen a ton of his content out there. And uh, he is a photographer, uh, a, a boat photographer, boat and yacht specialist, mm -hmm. and a photojournalist. And uh, he's been in the boating industry for quite a bit. I've had the opportunity and pleasure of being on some shoots with him. And uh, really cool guy. So you can't, you definitely need to check that out. Yeah, you're going to see Kelly nerd out on some photography. <laughs> it's going to be great. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast with Marine Max, bringing you the latest news and notes in the world of boats. Sure. So welcome to another episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. We're your hosts. I am Lisa, and this is my buddy, Kelly. Hey, how's everybody doing? <laughs> uh, please interact with us in the comments section. And if you like what you see, share it with your friends, family, your neighbors, and your dog down the street. We'd love for everybody to get involved. And oh we'd God. love to hear from you, right? Yes. We want to hear. What do you want to know? What kind of questions do you, do you have? What mm -hmm. can we go find for you? Yeah, there's a ton of new boats coming out. There's mm -hmm. a ton of new boats that are already out. So, you know, what do you want to hear about more? We can definitely dive in and talk about anything boating that you'd like to discuss. Yes. And one of the things that I saw this week was a 40 foot floating violin. And I thought, okay, okay that's a little unique. Let's talk about it. Yes. So uh, Marine Industry News has the story on this. And yes, it literally is. Uh, I, I don't know if you would consider it a boat per se, but it is a floating violin. And in this image, uh, there is a violinist uh, on the violin. Uh, is that a violin? I don't know. It looks a, a, a little big a to be a, a cello. There a we cello. Go. There is a video too. There's a YouTube link that I yep. put in where you can actually see them launch it. So this or artist orchestrated a 40 foot floating violin as a tribute to COVID victims. Um, they had a test voyage in Venice mm -hmm. earlier this month um, as a cellist played on deck. Jeez. Pretty cool stuff. It's huge, right? It's huge and it's actually um, extremely accurate in terms of like just the look and the, the lacquer or whatever that they put. It's all nice and polished and, and looks beautiful. So, I mean, clearly this is uh, some people that uh, they, they spent a ton of time putting this together and they knocked it out of the park. Yeah. That's I, a little nerve wracking trying to get it into <laughs> the, uh, the water there. Uh, you know. It's a little nerve-wracking. That there. definitely a little nerve-wracking. So the floating instrument was built to be easily disassembled and rebuilt, mm -hmm. and it will be officially launched on September 19th, where it will cruise around Lagoon City in Venice. Oh, man. France. So very, very cool. Thought we should share that with you all, that people are going above and beyond to build yep. floating, floating craft. Yeah, I think we need to get out there and check that out in Lagoon City in Venice. Um, I think I'll go. There's, there's more information that we need to discuss with the floating violin. So, <laughs> but no, that is really cool and uh, for a really good cause. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. All right, so moving right along, mm -hmm. Soundings Trade Only is going to host a leadership summit earlier or earlier what's the opposite of earlier later, <laughs> later. this year um there it, the 2021 leadership summit is uh from 2 to 5 p.m in september mm -hmm. um in conjunction with the international boat builders exhibition and conference mm -hmm. Ibex, yep. um, which opens the following day. So they have a guest speaker, very uh, uh, doctor. I don't. I can, I'm <laughs> never going to pronounce his name correctly, um, but he has a PhD in computer science, mm -hmm. and uh, he runs a variety of service and manufacturing based uh, private, uh, private and publicly held tech companies. Mm -hmm. um, so he specializes in leadership, basically leading companies to be successful. Yep. Um, so it's going to be a really, really great meeting of the minds, and our own. Brett McGill Brett is McGill. going to be part of the panel of dis, uh, discussion after the, the his presentation. So awesome. uh, very cool. Wanted to note that. Yeah. Uh, definitely a great, great lineup of uh, people that are going to be on that panel. Leaders in the industry, leaders all around. It's very good stuff. Yep. And that that uh, was from Trade Only. So you definitely want to check that uh, discussion out there. 
And uh, I think Brett McGill was here down there on the docks during oh, that yes. photo of him on the website, too. So oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it's a photo themed episode, everybody. Photo themed episode. It is. Of it is. All well, right. speaking of some photo worthy content, sure. let's talk about the Azimuth Summer Rendezvous. So you were just in New York. Uh, I was in the Hamptons. It's not oh, just New York. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, it was uh, an incredible event. Uh, I've been to quite a few of these uh, Azimuth Rendezvous, Summer Rendezvous. And this one, you know, it, the, the, the customers just had a blast. I mean, the weather was great. A little stormy the first day, but once uh, the, the events got rolling, it was just a great time. Uh, you know, a ton of boats there. I don't even, I can't even count how many boats w that were there, but some really cool boats, cool. including, you know, some of the Verves. The 47 Verve was there, uh, 66 Magellano, 66 Flybridge, uh, 72 Flybridge. Wow. The list goes on and on. You saw pretty much anything that you could think of other than the 125 Tri-Deck, which you have to stay tuned <laughs> later this year for. Uh, there was a ton of really cool stuff. So you need to check out the video, That's of the kind awesome. of the recap. Half of the event. So were most of the, the owners from the New York area? A lot of them were in the Northeast. Uh, you know, a lot of them uh, have, have homes up there for the summer and then they also come down in the winter time. Yep. And, um, you know, but the beauty is a lot of these boats you see everywhere. You don't always just see them in New York. You know, oh, in, of course. In, in the winter times, you'll see them down in Florida. Um, so they clearly use their azimuths, which is, yeah. you know, part of the fun and part of these events is Use your boat. You, you got it. You got to use it. <laughs> well, and Marine Max helps you do that by uh, helping Azimut, you know, coordinate the rendezvous. Yep. So an another really cool rendezvous that just happened was the mm -hmm. Aquila rendezvous. And we do talk about yes. that a little bit later. Um, when you see a bunch of boats, catamarans specifically, mm -hmm. rafted up together, like visually is quite impressive. Yep. Um, so some of the uh, the footage from this was was really great. They had 17 boats, 21 owners, and over 100 people in attendance. That's a, that's yeah, a lot. That's a Socially lot. Socially distanced people, mind you, because everybody's on their own boat. So don't even go there. <laughs> no, but it's, uh, this is, uh, I'm trying to think of it. what annual, I mean, we've had, what, three of these, I think, at this point? Uh, there, there's been quite yes. a few uh, Aquila rendezvous yeah. uh, down in Captiva Island, Florida. People love these events. I mean, Aquila owners, I feel like, are ones that just love to have fun, love to group up with a bunch of other, you know, boaters and, and kind of raft up and just enjoy the day out on their catamarans. And uh, what better way to do so than on an Aquila 54 or 44 or 48 or 32, 36, and of course the I 70. I take the dinghy. Just get me out there. <laughs> the rib. That's, that's also a new one. Oh, coming, coming soon yeah. to Marina near you. But the 70. Uh, the 70 was there. Uh, it was... Yep. Majestic, it was beautiful, it was amazing. Uh, everybody loves seeing the Aquila 70 there yeah. too. Just an amazing boat. Yeah, all right. Well, there's some quick headlines for you from around the industry. And mm -hmm. now we are gonna get into some really cool marine photography with our special guest. All right, everybody, we would like to welcome Mr. Jim Raycroft, a journalist, a photojournalist specializing in the boating industry. Yes. Welcome to the program. Welcome, Jim, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks, how are you? Excellent, excellent. So um, if you could tell everybody out there, you have a beautiful backdrop. Uh, where are you out in the world? Uh, today we are in at home in uh, Rhode Island. Okay. Just got back in from a trip up to the uh, Wooden Boat Museum in Clayton, New York. The last oh, few that's days. cool. A fabulous show they have up there. Just These are like works of art, these wooden boats. Beautiful stuff. Very cool. Now, will we see some photography of these wooden boats coming out soon? We can soon? do that. I can, uh, <laughs> I can send you a few shots from that. Uh, it was, it's, it's, uh, it's like a pilgrimage, you know. We've yeah. gone a couple of times. So it's a, it's, a good, it's a good time if you're into old wooden boats or just uh, the beauty of them. They are, right. they are really pieces of art. For sure. And so uh, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, you're, you're up there uh, in the Northeast right now. Uh, tell us about the past few months. I've been, we've been kind of seeing on some social medias that you've been kind of uh, hitting the road and all over the place. Tell us uh, or tell the viewers out there where you've been and, and what you were up to. Well, it's, uh, it's been a strange and uh, uh, long, strange trip for everybody this last year, year plus. Yeah. But uh, yes. business didn't slow down at first, the very beginning of that. And then it picked up like gangbusters. And we've just been flat out. Uh, and traveling is is you know, has its share of additional difficulties now, but we've, we've yep. had to go down to Florida, to the Bahamas, in the Caribbean, uh, into Bermuda. And wow. each one of these places has its own very special way of uh, making it <laughs> difficult to get there, but it's all, it's all manageable. Everybody does the best job they can and you just keep, keep cooking along with it. 
Yep, you have to kind of just go with whatever it is and, and just make sure that you can continue on and, and kind of be prepared. I'm sure that's a big part of it is preparation and know yeah. before you're going into a country what their their current situation is and uh, just go with it. Yeah, you, you can't uh, you can't just get on a plane anymore like it used to be. You've got to you've yeah. got to sign in in advance to the country's portals. You've got to comply with all the medical requirements and you know, their immigration requirements. Sometimes the equipment, temporary import, and mm -hmm. then you get into drones, it gets even worse. But uh, you just yeah. have to do what you have to do. That's all. Yeah, and I think, uh, Jim, for all those viewers out there, I mean, uh, personally being kind of having a background in photography and video production, I mean, I, I think it's just so exciting what you do on a daily basis. And and I think a lot of the viewers out there, too, also have seen a ton of your imagery coming out yeah. over the years. And, um, you know, it, it's kind of cool to, to always talk uh, to the manufacturers and talk to the people that are, are actually creating the boats, but you're creating the vision of the boats to the for the people that see it. So, I think it's a pretty cool thing. And, um, you know, what could you say to uh, to s some of the, the viewers out there that might have seen your imagery or, or not even know it was your imagery, but just said, wow, that is an incredible shot of a boat? Yeah, well, I'm very fortunate to be working in this field because uh, I started off photography and regular commercial work, annual reports, advertising, studio work. And you work with a lot of things in situations where people don't really care that much about the specific subject. But in boating, almost everyone is here because they want to be and it's a great bunch of people to work with very different than the, the typical commercial field so uh i get to work with some great people we get to work with some terrific products and it's always a team effort that uh we manage to uh to pull it off one way or the other it's, you know things have their problems and schedules issues weather all kind of broken boats stuff happens <laughs> and you just yeah. have to keep mo powering through it and when you work with a group of people that that have been dealing with in the in the boating and yachting industry, you've got you've got the best people who just want to solve the problem and and keep it moving. Yep. So that's what we're dealing with every day. Well, and I know that uh, a lot of people from the outside looking in, they're like, especially the Instagram world and stuff, Lisa. Right? When you oh, yeah. see it and you see such a beautiful image, you're like, man, that must be the best job in the world. You're just going to all these places. But it's a ton of work behind all those great images, right? I mean, could you talk a little bit about what it takes to get some of this content? Uh, it's a ton of work. It's Planning is key uh, when you're getting into a project. You've really got to understand what the point is of it. It's not just pretty pictures, and they don't just fall into your camera. So <laughs> you've got to figure out locations, time of day to shoot it, watching weather as you're planning these things. We've had, we've had big shoots, very involved setups canceled just because the weather just didn't pan out the way the forecasts were mm -hmm. yeah. you just have to figure out how to deal with these contingencies so it it is really a group effort and uh and you just got to work on it from a lot of different angles be sure that you can get what you need you have the options you have backup when you need it yeah uh, it it the end result is the simple little thing that you see at the end that's the result of a tremendous amount of work on the part of a lot of people. Right. Well said. Yeah, very well said. So, I mean, I, I know that there are people aspiring to be like you. Um, give us a little bit of your background. How did you get into photography and, and more specifically, marine photography? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm going to get out of the <laughs> service. I went uh, back to school in the GI Bill to photography school in Boston and uh, was very quickly working in, in the advertising world with a, with a terrific photographer and as an assistant and did that for a couple of years. And that went on for maybe 10 years and you get pretty burned out in that, yeah. in that area. Um, you want to make money in photography, go into advertising or shoot weddings because that's where the <laughs> money is. But uh, after, after 10 years of that, I was looking for some way to really start to enjoy and rekindle the, 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 that enjoyment that I originally had in photography and met some friends, heard about the charter industry, knew nothing about it. Two weeks later, we're on a plane to the Virgin Islands and I'm introduced to a charter boat show and how great that was. And just mm -hmm. like, this is a business. Yeah. So, you know, again, from the outside, it all seems like nothing but fun and games. Um, <laughs> But chartering is very difficult as well. So anyway, I got to meet a bunch of captains and, and brokers and just really liked the environment. And within two years, I was out of the advertising, sold the studio and was pretty much shooting boats, resorts and that sort of thing. Small camera work, 
location work and yeah. then getting into uh, shooting and writing uh, on some travel situations. So it's, it's been great. Not never look back. Smart move. <laughs> and, and like you said, you know, you never look back. You, you're going where your passion is. And that's uh, to, I'm sure, to travel, to, to be with the, uh, be on the water all the time and be with these amazing boats. I mean, it's just such a cool yep. experience. It, it, it really is. And again, very fortunate to be working in this field. And we've got, we've got stuff from, from little tiny boat shooting tenders that are 12 feet long with an outboard yeah. to... 300 plus foot yachts and interiors and shoots take a week just to get through one boat um, and wow. everything in between. So there's the other thing I love about this industry is that there's tremendous variety available. Um, mm -hmm. We shoot and, and a lot of the studio work that we had done in the past comes back around full circle in this because we're not only shooting the boat and an exterior shot in a beautiful location, but we've got interiors to do. So there's architecture. There are right. details. There's there's food, lifestyle, right. yeah. all the things that go in. There's a lot of different disciplines in there that you've got to deal with when you're working in this industry, uh, and some of it's set up with models, and you know it's very planned. Others, it's just you're grabbing it as you go in documentary right. style, and and everything in between. So I love that variety mm -hmm. and uh, the challenge. And Jim, while you're you're kind of discussing this stuff, and Lisa, uh, you can certainly continue onwards. But what I want to do is bring up some of the images too. Uh, we have your website. Uh, uh, we're going to be bringing up jimraycroft.com, uh, so you can definitely check that out. See a ton of sample images from Jim. Uh, but also, uh, let me get mine off there and full screen that for a few. So I mean, just some of these images. It almost looks like you would almost have to Photoshop some of this stuff to get. I mean, you're sitting in front of, you know, your, your downtown Manhattan almost. Uh, you have the Statue of Liberty behind this amazing yacht. Uh, I'm sure that yacht, just looking at it, has to be, what, 150, 200 feet, something like that. And it looks dwarfed almost in a way. It's crazy. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, he's pushing 200. I, I don't remember the exact length, but... A shot like this is is all planning, 100%. I mean, yep. there's nothing nothing by accident here because you can't you can't even shoot in New York without all the permits now after 9/11. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bringing a helicopter into a national monument like the Statue of Liberty requires, uh, you know, pre-approvals. You've got to deal with the Harbor Police in New York. You've got to deal with the Coast Guard. You've got to deal with the FAA, and the captain's wow. got to figure out how close he can get with that boat and make the position work when he's running out of water. It's a very shallow section on that side of the statue. So sure. it, it's just all planning, time of day, the weather day, and then the boat schedule. So that, that took a lot to pull together. In the end, looks like a simple shot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, and I, I'm sure you made a lot of tourists day by for sure when they're they're going to just see the Statue of Liberty and they're like, you know, this is a typical day of tourism, and then they see a almost 200 foot yacht sitting out yeah. there, uh, helicopter flying around. Oh, geez, that'd be so cool. Yeah, it was it was it was a it was a good challenge. It was a lot of fun to do. And the captain again, I'm asking move forward a little more, a little more. <laughs> he's, he's reading the depth gauge, going, okay, this is, we're about there. I said, well, do what you can, whatever you can give me i'm happy with and so yep. this is what we ended up with and retouching wise everything is there as you see it there's no mm -hmm. the boat wasn't moved and nothing nothing else was done the left side of the statue was under construction down on the water line so we oh. cleaned that up the seawall a little bit but that's it everything mm -hmm. else wow. was was as you see it now is that at sunrise it looks like an early morning shot nope that's uh, end of the day western light end of the day and, i had a 50 50 chance Yep, it's uh, you get a little more time to play okay. in sunset than you do in sunrise. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, and getting and everybody I, in position. I mean, getting the chopper up mm -hmm. there and the permission to get in and all. You're trying to do that, and and the light is getting coming up on you is a lot tougher than doing it the other way around. True. Very true. And you, you did mention, I mean, you know, this is a, a mega yacht, a super yacht mega yacht. I don't know what, what you consider. <laughs> it's a huge boat. Um, but, you know, you also talk about this is a, a one side of the spectrum. But there's also, I mean, uh, you, you kind of shoot a lot of things, not just the, the super yachts. And what's kind of the difference in the photography, uh, your, your, your process when it's, it's, you know, big boat versus little boat? Well, it depends on, you know, what they're trying to get out of it. That particular shot, that was that was the extent of what we did for that for that yacht. 
Mm -hmm. everything else that they may have done they had or or did in europe or whatever but for whatever reason the owner and management company wanted a shot that nailed that boat into new york so we created this uh idea of where to where to go and how to do it and where could we bring the boat and and pick up no question that's new york um, right mm -hmm. <laughs> so, with, you know, with, with, with smaller boats, a lot of times what we're doing is maybe working for a manufacturer. So what we're trying to show there is every aspect of detail of the boat, the, the, the beauty, the design, the convenience, the, mm -hmm. the, the comfort, the uh, everything from the engine room to, you know, idyllic anchorage scenes with people enjoying a, a, a drink at sunset. But yep. There's a lot of technical work on those as well, uh, getting into showing a potential buyer who even a small boat's hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, you're going to, they want to see as much as possible. So sure. try to do that. And also maybe a video on a, on a, a sea trail video or whatever. So it really depends on the, what the, what the call is for the job, how, how deep we have to get into it. Yeah. Well, and, and you, you also talked about, I mean, how depending on the job, there's, you can have that, well, we need lifestyle shots of people enjoying themselves. So finding the right models that fit that bill for that boat. You also talk about, um, you know, if it's a crude boat or something, having uh, food sitting out there. And, and I, somebody, they always say, and I don't know if it's true, but they say that the hardest photography in many ways is food photography. So making sure that the food looks good when, when it's sitting there in the galley or right. wherever else. I mean, in the heat. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, what it... And all this is going into maybe one or two days of a, f a photo shoot. So, I mean, uh, I take it organization, like you said, it, it has to be uh, spot on. It does. And uh, as far as food goes, when you're dealing with, with mega yachts, you're dealing with very high-end chefs mm -hmm. who not mm -hmm. only understand how to prepare the food, but they all come make it look good. The presentation on those boats is extremely important. So we're fortunate in that end. I, I used to shoot a lot of food in advertising. We did a lot of work with Pepperidge Farm and a bunch of other companies. And we'd always hire a food stylist to come in and make oh. that stuff look exactly the way they wanted it to look on the package or in the ad. Uh, wow. And, and still stay legal with what you could do. Uh, like you can't, you're selling ice cream. You can make a beautiful ice cream cone with mashed potatoes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Won't right. melt and it'll be perfect. Except that you can't do that if you're selling ice cream. That can, you can only do that if the ice cream is incidental to the to the product shoot. Sure. So oh. with 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 uh, chefs on these on these yachts, they're all very very proud of what they do. They're all very good, and they're you know we've I can't think of one situation where we had a problem working with a chef. I mean, we could spend a half a day just shooting the food, doing mm -hmm. a galley prep scene, doing the. The, 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 where the stewardess is delivering the food to the, to the clients. Uh, everything about the presentation and the delivery is, is important. Yeah. So we, we shoot the whole process. And wow. uh, it, it's, again, it comes back to the team, the yacht team, that they right. know what, what you were going to do, communicate it in advance. Everybody knows what's going to happen. And you work around their schedule. Galleys on those yachts never stop. So right. nope. I don't dictate to a chef, well, I need to shoot the food shots at, you know, one thirty. I ask him, when is he free or she yep. to let me get in the galley and do some prep work with them? Uh, and then also for them to prepare meals just for the camera. It's not sure. like we're going to we're going to shoot the meal and then they're going to serve it to somebody. We need to have that thing on the table for five minutes, maybe 30 minutes. You know, right. it's not going to be edible by the time we're done. Mm -hmm. um, so they've got to give their time just for this. And, and uh, plus they're, they've got the active kitchen because you've got 15 people on the crew that have to yeah. eat on that. So it's, it's a lot of work for the chefs, a lot of extra work when the photographer comes aboard. So you treat them with respect and you work with their schedule and uh, everything goes well. Nice. Yeah. It, it, you, you did mention that too. I mean, it's uh, these guys are trying to do their job still while accommodating a bunch of people running around with cameras and, and lights <laughs> and things like that. So um, it's, it's a fine line of uh, professionalism to make sure that letting them do their job, but also getting the things that you need to do your job as well. Right. So I know uh, BVIs, you, you did mention British Virgin, or you mentioned the Virgin Islands earlier in this conversation. Uh, tell us your, uh, your, your, experience down in the British Virgin Islands. Uh, as many of you know, we have Marine Max vacations <laughs> right. down in the British Virgin Islands. Tell us about your experiences down there. Um, 
been there many, many times. It's, it's really a wonderful place for people who haven't been there yet. You should definitely plan on going. Uh, but plan is, is good too, to figure out sure. how you want to experience it. We've been down there on, on, uh, smaller boats, bigger boats, uh, in some ways, a smaller boat is kind of more fun in, mm -hmm. in, in well again the level of the level of uh luxury you're looking for you should definitely right. match that up with your with your expectations uh marine max does uh, a fabulous job we've been in the bahamas and in uh the virgin islands with them on mm -hmm. various products mm -hmm. of the power cats and if you want to spend time in the water experiencing the environment then that's the way to go mm -hmm. uh, if you want to dress for dinner and have people waiting on you hand and foot, there's nothing wrong with any of that. And you want to sit on the boat and look at the sunset and maybe get in the water once in a while, then maybe a mega yacht's the way to go or, or <laughs> sure. a bigger yacht. But there's, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be there no matter how you do it. It really mm -hmm. just is a matter of your taste and your budget and how, how you want to experience it. It's all good. Marine Max, uh, boats are unbelievably comfortable for we were just down there with the 54 yeah and, brand uh, new. and four adult couples and a lot of gear and a lot of stuff and we were never crowded on that boat uh, yeah. everybody's got privacy when they want it and yep. uh, with a busy schedule when you have a break time people want to be able to take a break and uh it was it was fabulous I've just it's amazing how much space there is on on those mm -hmm. boats well, and I think you're one of the first people because uh, the, the 54 just arrived not too long ago uh, down in the islands. So, I mean, for those potentially wanting to experience the Aquila 54, the Marine Max Vacations 545 down in the British Virgin Islands, what would you say to them? Do it. You want to <laughs> the, the, I mean, the, the 40, was the 43, 434, is that right? The other one, the smaller the one? Uh, uh, yes, 443, correct. 443, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a fabulous boat as well. We've we've been down there twice, I think, on, on that boat for various projects. And uh, the 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 fifty four offers a master, and mm -hmm. and uh, the the I mean, it's set up great for couples and even kids. They have a bunk cabin on the fifty four, and it's it, and they're all very comfortable. And everybody's got their own uh, bathroom, you know, head and shower. Yep. So it's you're not. You're not cutting corners when you're on one of those boats. It's fabulous. You know? No, that's so exciting. And we're definitely looking forward to seeing the photos that come out of that trip. And I know uh, you're working with another publication to do a story um, about it, too. So once we have those out, we'll definitely share those with, uh, with our viewers and our followers, because I'm sure that they'd be interested to hear more about that trip as well. Yeah, and while we're kind of talking about it, too, I just wanted to bring up. So yeah, he, you did mention, I'm guessing you also uh, knew about the 484. I think you were saying uh, the one uh, with four staterooms there. But, yeah, the 545 with that full beam, more than – it's a master. I mean, that thing <laughs> yeah. is insane. Uh, and uh, I wonder, how did it go down? I would love to know. Uh, who decided <laughs> who got to get the master in the, in the 545? Who? <laughs> did you <laughs> did you have to draw straws did you flip coins what did you do no straws no uh, well i instigated the the project uh and yeah. kind of brought the parts together the best i could with marine max who we have a great working relationship and then with uh uh passage maker magazine and some other folks who who are in marketing who came along to help be be models because in this case we're not hiring any professional models. Everybody right. in the shots are real people. Yep. Uh, everybody in there, we, I encouraged everybody to shoot a lot with their iPhones because those are very usable pictures for this type of project. Yeah. And everybody, you know, it, some people had uh, brought their own cameras and GoPros. We have underwater stuff. And we've got a ton of different types of things that it'll boil it down to a very good representation of what a week on that boat can be like. And sure. even, even that the BVI is... Is not fully open yet, but it's on the way. It's going in the right direction. Right. Um, the so there was plenty to do and uh, and see. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, no. Whoever's organizing the trip typically gets to pick the cabin they want. <laughs> so 
Hey, Jim, and you did mention too, I mean, uh, you know, everybody's using different uh, mediums. I don't know if, I guess it's probably the same medium for t being photography, but m a different uh, gear. Uh, you know, typically in the past, especially uh, professionals, uh, you, you DSLR, you know, you're, you're bringing a big camera with some big heavy lenses. Um, but obviously now, I mean, you mentioned it, you know, mobile phones are pretty powerful these days. Some of these smaller cameras that go underwater are pretty powerful and can actually provide some, some shots that could potentially end up being on the cover of some magazine somewhere. Uh, what do you think of, yeah, tell us about the technology differences, you know, maybe. If, or just your equipment, like what, what couple, are you using, what's your favorite? decades before versus now and what are the benefits? Well, I'm not a I'm not a gadget guy. I'm not running out and buying the latest thing that just popped off the shelf. I work with Canon equipment uh, almost exclusively for the last I don't know since autofocus came out. And, <laughs> you know, like before you were born. But uh, <laughs> but uh, you've got to have that. Uh, you know, a full chip DSLR for hero shots and mm -hmm. for and and uh, well again the type of job this job. There's a lot more documentary. We've got several mm -hmm. articles coming out, Passage Maker, that'll be uh, showing what that's about. They're not product shots. They're not catalog shots for, to sell a yacht. So sure. it's a different approach. And in that regard, if you're working with a new iPhone, they've got wonderful processors. It's, it's unbelievable what they can do. And when as soon as they start oh, shooting raw, I don't think they mm -hmm. have started that yet, we'll really be able to use them for, for uh, commercial work. Wow. Um, because yep. you really need to be able to shoot a raw file in order to do the work necessary on it to, to process it and get it ready. Uh, JPEG just doesn't quite cut it for sure. for commercial work. You know, again, the documentary style work. Hey, you're going to see some stuff you can't get any other way. I mean, uh, yeah. so there's there's GoPro. GoPros have been great and a great addition to the to the camera bag and and the iPhones. Little underwater stuff. I used to have a small underwater camera. Uh, I don't use that anymore. We've got these domes for the GoPros, so you can do the half over, oh. half under. Very, very fun shots. We've got a couple for this last shoot with Marine Max that we're gonna that you'll be seeing soon. Excellent. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the most important thing is to understand how to use the gear you have, not to have a ton of gear. Mm -hmm. The more gear you have, the more crap you've got to haul around, drag through <laughs> customs, immigration. It gets banged up. You're working in the saltwater environment. You got to be very careful, and you will get spray on that camera. I yep. don't care what it is. You're gonna. It's gonna happen. So you just have to be real careful with your stuff. But dry bags. Bring a dry, big dry bag. You throw everything yep. in that constantly. You know. Well said. So, yeah. Hey, it's uh, just get the tools you need, and then get really good with those tools that you really yeah. understand them, and you'll be fine. Yeah, and I think uh, you, you did mention it too, Jim. I mean, uh, it uh, just depends on what you're shooting, right? I mean, uh, there's there's certain, especially when you're out in the islands. Um, yeah. What I would be bringing out in the islands if I'm if I'm just relaxing and having a good time on my 545, and then going to you know the the baths and things, I bring my phone and probably a GoPro, right? Yeah. So I mean, it's the, the type of content you can get, but also uh, when you're promoting those types of areas showing that type of content to people so they can kind of feel like they're in the moment themselves, I think is pretty powerful too. Yep. Well, that's, that's the beauty of working with these, these little and very, very portable uh, cameras system, mm -hmm. telephone, GoPro is that you're going to get shots. You can't get with the big camera. Now they're mm -hmm. not going to be, the, the, the files aren't going to be as big. You're not going to be able to reproduce them as large necessarily, but you, what you're going to have is realistic images, the real thing, real people in that real spot. And I think a lot of people really appreciate seeing that. They don't need everything to be a slick advertising type photograph. So I know uh, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, the, what it takes to go in to photograph one boat in New York. Um, some of the images that you sent over, I noticed there are like maybe 15 or 16 boats on the cover of that horizon. What, 20 something boats? Oh my gosh. Okay, so what what goes into... I mean, one, you have a ton of photography that's made it on the, on the cover of, of multiple magazines. Congratulations. That's mm -hmm. fabulous. Thank you. But what goes into that? Uh, planning. <laughs> when, you're gonna, when, when you think about bring, shooting one boat running at speed, whether it's a really fast uh, Riva or it's a slower uh, cruiser, you got one boat to deal with. I mean, that's a piece of cake compared to fleet shots and group shots because you've got a boat underway. Now you've got two boats. Well, this is a, 
the Spectre one is something else entirely, which we could talk about. But this shot with Horizon, that was from a Horizon Yachts rendezvous in the Abacos. Oh, and cool. The, at the, we, the, uh, they wanted they wanted a group shot at some point. So then you got to figure out well, when are you going to do this and how are you going to do it. So yep. we decided it would be the last thing we did when the boats are departing the marina at the end of the rendezvous. That's when we're going to nail this shot because they're all going to be off the dock and they're all leaving and and so we have to have a captain's meeting. We had to sit down with all oh. these guys. Some of them are more professional captains than others. Some are owner operators. Mm-hmm and explain how we're going to set this up and what the plan is. And then we've got to take into consideration the angle of the light at the time of day, we're going to do it. Everybody needs to know what they have to do. So we had two plans. One was going to be a straight line, which we thought if you just look out of your wheelhouse left and right and try to stay in that same position, Mm -hmm. the guys in the middle, you think about driving a boat like this and they're doing uh, somewhere between 10 and 15 knots a slight movement one way or the other, and you're into the next boat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's stressful for these captains. So we had to make it as simple as possible. So let's do a straight line. We've got a compass heading, stand on that heading and then slowly kind of move together and bring them in one after the other from the sides. Sure. It gets a little nerve wracking and people (laughs) start break out if they hit pull back on the throttle because they get nervous. Now the whole thing's falling apart. We had a straight line at one point. But when it started to fall apart, we ended up with this sort of a chevron shape a little bit, which was more Mm -hmm. interesting. It's an accident. It's more interesting. So that's the shot we went with in the end for for the cover. But uh, these guys did an amazing job. And you've got to be patient and you've got to be really explain what you want in in advance. No way for them to learn what you need to do on a shot like that when you're doing it. Right. Uh, we had one of the, 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 the head of Horizon was the Roger was the on board giving instructions and support to everybody to hold them together. Because as I said, we have very experienced captains and we had owner operators with not much experience and it right. all tracked in this photograph. So it worked yeah. out. It was really fun to get that many boats in there. Yeah, that's cool. I, so, I mean, you, you think of the planning, of course, but you also, you talked about the captain. So there's a captain aboard every one of these boats uh, that's, that's having to make sure that everything goes properly to uh, not only just get the photograph, which is probably the least thing is important thing on their mind, but also you mentioned, you know, just having it just not crash into the other boat or anything like that. So, I mean, yeah, just the, the, the amount of preparation, but also the amount of skill involved, um, you know, with, with people like that, it, it's incredible for that many. What, how many, what did they say? How many boats? 23, 23 boats. That's not, there was at one point there's the boats aren't retouched, uh, in this, this is the shot. Wow. Uh, we, we also wow. shot this on video at the same time. We had a, cool. uh, but uh, we've got the monohulls in the foreground, and in this shot, I think we've got the, the cats in the background. And uh, Very cool. later on, we did a we did a group shot with the cats at anchor, which the hard part of that was just setting it up because once uh-huh. they had it, once they had the raft put together. But it's mm-hmm. pretty impressive just that that number of boats in one place. Yes. Uh, yeah. In, in a beautiful location, you know. I know. We just had a couple of customer rendezvous. One was the Aquila catamaran rendezvous that was down in South Seas off of Captiva Mm -hmm. Island. And they rafted up and they had the 70 down there. And it was awesome looking. When you have that many power cats together rafted up, it just looks awesome. And then Kelly was just at the Azimut rendezvous up in the Northeast. And seeing seeing the boats come through, I mean, it's just a, it's just a sight to behold to see some of these large boats, especially these new models that you've never seen before. It's just such a cool thing. Um, and, uh, and, and it reminds me also, we did something similar with the Galleon lineup uh, a few years back uh, when they kind of were unveiled in the United States, had them all together and uh, running. Wow. Yeah. It, having flashbacks of that now, it's always <laughs> an interesting situation. But kudos oh to you. Well, that's that Spectre shot that you put in the boat into yeah. the cover shot. Mm-hmm. The, 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 this was Benetti called and wanted a, they needed this boat shot. So this is the typical scenario of trying to photograph these boats. Right. Um, they want it shot. Uh, it's going to be a cover if we can manage to get it shot. So now I'm working with the captain trying to figure out, okay, what's the schedule that works for you? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. it's all about 
it's all about the boat and the owner's movement with that boat and where it's where it's going. Right. So we came up with a date where the boat would be leaving Palm Beach and heading over to Grand Bahama. That's a certain day at a certain time, and it's all scheduled and, and programmed. And I have to deal with that. I mean, there's mm-hmm. not, I'm not telling anybody what to do. I'm not even telling them which way to turn when I get out there. The problem with, with this particular thing was uh, the uh, there was a TFR up over uh, over Palm Beach because the president was in town. Mm-hmm. Oh. What that means is you don't fly in that 50 mile radius. And, and you don't fly in there at all doing any commercial stuff. Mm-hmm. Some, some, some aircraft can get a, a, a pass to run through the TFR. If, well, anyway, that's not important here, but <laughs> you, can't, you couldn't with us. We need to find a helicopter. So I call my regular guys. Nobody wants to fly 50 miles offshore and be six feet off the water and then fly back again. We had to go out 50 miles out to get him coming out of the right. eastern side of the TFR. Wow. And then get the shot and then get back. But we couldn't fly directly there from uh, from from where were we? I think we were in Boca. We couldn't fly there because we were in the TFR. We could exit the TFR to the south. Once we're clear of it, meaning 50 miles from Palm Beach, we can start going out to sea to the east. Oh, but we have to stay out that outside that circle. So I've it's got not- the boat heading in his position. And we're going to try to rendezvous with him 50 miles offshore. Jeez. And uh, we saw him coming. We got out there a little early, but we couldn't go to him. We had to wait till he got outside the TFR. And then we started shooting. And he, he was on a course for Grand Bahama. This shot was done with mm-hmm. him, you know, standing on his heading. And we just worked around the boat uh, the best we could. And then spent another, you know, hour getting back to uh, back to the base. But I could only find one chopper pilot willing to do this when we needed to do it and go that far offshore. And, uh, but we found it. We just had to keep looking. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I actually, I love the shot and, um, I, I love the actual, the space above. I, you, I don't know if that was something planned, but you knew that this could be a potential, uh, a cover shot. So you wanted a lot of space above the boat for the logo of whatever magazine, it does look great. in this case, boat magazine. So, yeah, this was a cover assignment only. And, uh, so they have other angles where, where we're higher up. You see more boat. It takes up mm-hmm. more of the page and just, you give them a choice. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of times, sort of more often than not, people like to see their boats going from left to right on the cover. It's yep. just always a sign thing. As much as possible. So luckily for us, the sun worked out that way because he wasn't going to turn the boat for me. He, the, <laughs> board, the owner, might, you know, maybe looked out the window and saw a chopper out there. They probably knew we were coming, but they're not doing anything for us. They're just moving right. that boat. And we had to deal with that. And uh, mm-hmm. it makes mm-hmm. it interesting. You yeah. know, and, and in this case, finding the helicopter was was probably the most challenging thing to find a pilot willing to do this. Well, I know that we could we could ask you questions about uh, about your your photos and everything that we've seen seen online like all day. Yeah. I know Kelly could because well, he's been in that world. He knows your pain. Boys. Hey, and I've I've seen Jim shoot before, yeah. and uh, I've seen some of this stuff in action. So uh, I'm sure uh, if you'd like to see some of the content that you know Jim has put out there, you can mm-hmm. certainly check it out. Uh, JimRaycroft.com. Uh, uh, but also, I mean, just just Google um, Jim and, and what else, uh, Jim, in terms of like if somebody wants to find more of your content or more of your images, what, what are some of the best places to do so? Well, I think you just nailed it, uh, really, the website and Googling uh, because the magazines, when they give us credit, which is most of the time, which is very, very kind, then we end up in, in a Google search. Uh, in a lot of different ways, it'll bring up maybe a, a recent uh, magazine story or cover, or, or uh, man, not so much manufacturers advertising because they don't tend to use to uh, yep. give photo credits. But you know, the, both those ways, googling and the, and the website, kind of do it. Nice. Cool. Well, I know you gave one really good tip that I'm going to take with me is uh, g- use your equipment. You don't have to buy a bunch of fancy equipment. Use what you have and use it well. Mm-hmm. What's one other tip you could give some uh, potential photographers out there um, from a professional to a newbie? Um, treat your clients with a lot of respect. That's a good and one. They too. Will, and they will work harder to, to make the, the, the shoot come off. Cause whether you like it or not, no matter how big your ego might be, this is a team effort to arrive mm-hmm. at success. And if you start yelling at people and pushing them around and you know, whatever isn't going to work, they're not going to invite you back. Yeah. Yep. 
All right, very well said. Well All said. right, so we're gonna wrap things up and hopefully see you on the water sometime soon. Yeah. But uh, before hopefully. we do, do you, yeah, do you have any final thoughts or anything else that you you want to talk about that we maybe didn't cover yet today? I think you've done a great job of covering it, and I appreciate you uh, having me aboard for this. Ah, well said. Well I said. Love, love the little pun there too. That's excellent. <laughs> and um, yeah, again, if anybody wants to learn more, check out uh, jimraycroft.com. I'm sure if you Google it, like you said, you'll you'll bring up a ton of the images that he's shot over the years. And uh, uh, you know, if you have any questions for yep. him, be sure to to reach out. Or if you're looking to hire him for an upcoming shoot, yeah, uh, I'm sure he'd be more than interested in doing that as well. Great. Awesome. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> Unless he's sitting in the island somewhere enjoying a, a cocktail on the beach, uh, he'll probably get that phone call still and, yeah. and take off in a dinghy towards the airport. So. <laughs> All right, Jim. Well, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining us, and good yep. luck on your next, next adventure. Thank you, Lisa and Kelly. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. Have a good day. All right. Well, thank you so much to everybody for tuning in. And a special thanks to Mr. Jim Raycroft. Mm -hmm. We'd love hearing more about his stories. We might have to have him back on. I feel like we could talk to him oh, about, yeah. like, pick a photo, tell us a story about it. That'd be a fun game to play. That would be a really cool game to play. And again, you know, shout out to Jim. He's been in the industry for quite a long time. He knows everything there is to know about boating and uh, photography. And those two worlds kind of merging and colliding is, is such a cool thing. So shout out to, to Jim and uh, all the content that he produces. Yep, absolutely. Well, again, thank, thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed today's boating broadcast. As always, stay healthy and boat happy. We will see you next time. We'll see ya. We hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. To keep up with the latest news and notes in the world of boats, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Until next time, we'll see you out on the water.